what it seems to be, but that's not where we are right now. Yeah. What remains is what is additional, and what will it take to have a Republican review this and say that, but we, we just couldn't wait for them. Heading into the next election cycle, do you have any anxiety at all about any of the stuff we're talking about or anything that we're not talking about impacting your ability to hold control of the House in 2020? Doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Our first responsibility is to protect and defend the Constitution. Right. Remember, the House Intel Committee is taking the lead, at least on this portion of the investigation right now. The chairman, Adam Schiff, says they are moving, quote, expeditiously, calling for testimony from various officials, including the inspector general who first reviewed this complaint. For a better idea of what is to come, because there's the politics, then there's the procedure. Let's start with procedure. Some public, some quiet behind the scenes. I spoke with Casey Burgett. He is a senior fellow at the Governance Project, which is nonpartisan. He specializes in the legislative branch. We know that things are going on behind the scenes. This two-week period, is it more of a, a help to let them get their stuff together or a hindrance? Yeah, I don't think that this uh, the timing was uh, a coincidence here. Uh, those more moderate members are going to go home. All of the members are going to go home, talk with constituents, get their public opinion bats about where they stand on impeachment, because this all came so fast. So uh, they're going to be collecting information from, from those that are putting them in office. But at the same time, the House Intel Committee, the House Judiciary Committee, they're going to be full steam ahead about uh, subpoenaing doc documents, getting witnesses lined up, uh, maybe potentially getting the whistleblower to come in behind closed doors. You've noted that in previous cases of impeachment proceedings, Clinton, Nixon, that there was a vote to create a special subcommittee almost, or like that we are officially in the Judiciary Committee going to look at the president for this. And in this case, that hasn't happened. It seems they're kind of just bypassing that maybe, that they're going to end up holding a vote with the full committee eventually. Yeah, it's, it's kind of undetermined right now. Uh, the, the formal inquiry was just more of a, a back and forth, uh, a terminology that in previous or previous Congresses and pre previous impeachment efforts, they took a full vote uh, to kind of say this is a formal, formal process as voted on by these members, and this is the names associated with that vote. Uh, with this, they are calling, calling it a formal inquiry without that formal vote. So uh, I, it's up to debate right now whether that is necessary, but impeachment proceedings are happening. They are conducting themselves as if uh, in that formal vote was taken. Uh, you won't notice a difference in their actions or the committee's work, but um, they didn't take that formal vote. So members are not on the record as of yet, uh, with a vote at least, about where they stand on making this go forward. But it's going forward uh, regardless. A lot of these things have been in motion for quite a long time. And just because they say, OK, we're ready now, doesn't mean that's actually going to happen. Um, hearing reports that they want to vote by the end of this year, do you think that is realistic? A, a week ago, I would have said probably not. But I think that they've gained a lot of traction, even more than they might have anticipated, Democrats, that is, uh, with the, the narrow focus of this Ukraine topic. Uh, it's one that the people understand. It's a case that they feel that they can make to their constituents who were on the fence about impeachment uh, that didn't necessarily show up in poll numbers about uh, the Mueller probe or other abuses of office that they may have thought about, including in articles of impeachment. Um, and so as long as they stay focused on this Ukraine scandal and the, uh, the abuse of power associated associated with it, I think that they're going to be able to move a little bit faster than, than the, the full scope that they may have intended to do uh, just with Ukraine as a piece of that abuse of power. At some point, is our House Democrats going to have to decide we want to get this done or we want to be more comprehensive? It's going to have to be an e either or, it seems. It does, and those are the negotiations that are going to be taking place over the next few weeks. And and as their polling comes in, and what members are hearing from their constituents, if they can move on just this Ukraine topic. But you're right, and that's been the the Trump mantra, uh, his administration's mantra, with generally a lot of oversight requests to to kick it to the courts, to slow it down, to run out the clock. So that's the back and forth that they're having right now uh, with Trump releasing the transcript, or at least a. a what is commonly referred to as a transcript, which isn't a transcript, but we know what was on that call, him releasing that kind of expedited that court case, because now it's out in the ether, and they have exactly what who said what, um, and they're able to base an effort just on that. So maybe they don't need it in the, in the case of this Ukraine talk. Casey Burgett, Senior Fellow with the Governance Project. Thank you. Thank you. Politics reporter Kellen Howell joins us in studio tonight. Um, Kellen.
Democrats, are they hoping to keep the whistleblower's identity secret for as long as possible? That's been my perception because the president's saying, I demand to know, I deserve to know, but that gives him a foil in a way. Sure. I think Democrats are absolutely trying to keep the whistleblower's identity a secret, um, largely because of the reason you just laid out. Um, we've heard the president now coming out multiple times saying, I demand to know who gave this whistleblower information, um, alluding to uh, saying the whistleblower is like a spy and saying, you know, remember what we did to spies in the good old days. And those are very concerning and, and threatening comments um, that, you know, are coming from the president. Um, also, uh, over the weekend, uh, the whistleblower's lawyer, uh, uh, in a letter said that, um, and this letter was obtained by 60 Minutes, um, said that there had been a $50,000 bounty uh, for any information relating to who gave this information to the whistleblower or who the whistleblower mm. is. Um, so I think that has raised a lot of concern as well. Republicans, you know, I've seen reports and they've even been flip floppy about one Republican in the House coming out and saying, yeah, pursue the inquiry, but not supporting impeachment or whatever. Um, but then again, you're not hearing a full-throated defense of the president this time around on this issue. Are they just waiting? Do they support him? I think Republicans largely right now are cautiously supportive of the president. Okay. Um, we've seen a few, um, 